uh, well, you know what? Since Kaleo was here, uh, he has a much stronger um, grasp of some hand tool techniques and things, and I figured it's something that I, I tend to gloss over a little bit. I don't really get a chance to go over some details. So, you know, none of this is planned ahead of time. We're just going to kind of grab a few tools off the wall and uh, hopefully review some real basic things dealing with hand tools, you know, whether it's uh, even chisel technique or sawing technique, block planes, very basic stuff. We're really just, we're not trying to make the dude work while he's here. He's only uh, here hey. for a couple of hours, um, but we're just going to have some fun with it and see what we can do. I'll probably wind up manning the camera because Nicole's busy and uh, we'll just have some fun. So yeah, yeah. All right, cool. All right. So Kaleo is going to show us, uh, I think we're going to start with a uh, mortising for a hinge, just chopping out a little, uh, a little hinge spot there for you. So um, it's pretty simple, but I think this is one of those things that if you don't review these simple things, you can kind of pass it up, think it's, think it's easier than it is, you know? So it's nice to get these foundation things under your belt. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes we get too, uh, too caught up with the big techniques, you know? You gotta, right. you gotta know the milk before you can eat the meat. Amen to that. That's nice. Right, that... I'm gonna have to use that. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna man the camera. I'm gonna let okay. Kaleo do his thing. Now this is just, uh, I mean, I'm not even doing this by measuring, we're just... Just draw out a little, let's see, a little mortise. Just a hypothetical mortise. Yeah. Now, I guess normally you'd use a, a nice marking gauge and a marking knife and all this good stuff. So but now if you did, if, if, well, I have it here somewhere, but we probably don't want to search everything down. But if you want, normally you would use some sort of a marking knife to slice yeah, the Yeah, traditionally I do just, just to get that nice shoulder beginning mm -hmm. shoulder line on each of the of the of the of the, the mortise for the the hinge okay so traditionally you write that down and then you'd also do the depth of the hinge on the side so you have a shoulder to sit the, the chisel in so i always go in and um i kind of with the marking knife you get that nice line so i'll always stay off that line a little bit to start and you always put the bevel to the waist side so and you just want to try and keep your, you know, your, your chisel straight and just give it a nice little tap and work around real quick. And I always use a chisel that's appropriate for the job. So, you know, if you have a nice long stretch, you got to, you got to, you got to go. Use, a, use the, big, the biggest chisel you have. There is a wider one there if you feel like using it. Oh. The one yeah. all the way on the right. The big daddy. The big one. You just do that so you have, you have a nice straight line the whole time. And you don't even need to actually pound it. And then, what I, and this is how I cut dovetails too. I come in and I just, I pair off that shoulder line. Right to that line you just created. So it just kind of gives you a reference mark the whole, the whole way around. So just that little tiny tapping you did went deep enough that now you could just pare away. You can pare away a little bit of the of the material. Okay. Just so you can see, you'll, you, I don't know if you can get in there, but you can see there's a nice little shoulder line there now, around where that marking was, and you can, then you can go back and clean up, get a little bit closer to that line. I mean, ultimately, you won't touch that line to like your very end, and you'll know when you if you when you when you need to chop back down some more because the the the, the chips won't come off as nice. Okay. As they, you know, you come down here like right now, you can. They just fall right off. So your initial scoring cut, you're pretty well inside your lines at that point. Yeah, I'm. I'm at this point, I'm really inside the line. And the other beautiful thing about, you know, you want to keep, you spend all that time flattening your chisel backs. And this is why. So you can keep your chisel nice and flat as you're paring this away. We can, uh, just a real basic review. Saw. I think a lot of us have a saw, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that we know how to use it. So anything you could teach us and stuff that you learned, um, proper holding technique. And this is, this is my favorite saw. I had this. I had this one too. Okay. And uh, I like this saw. I like pistol grip saws personally. 
I think maybe my hands are a little bit bigger, so if I can't get them into, into the other saws. Um, I, always, I always check the set on my saws, too. So I usually, I usually mark a few lines on a board. So let's see. Let's take this board out. Just if you could describe for anyone who might not know what set is. Oh, the set is the teeth of the saws. When they, when they file these saws, the, the set is the, uh, the kerf, basically the distance of the kerf of the saw. So sometimes when you get a brand new saw, you track it. So you, just like a bandsaw, so you draw some lines. Let's say you just draw some lines on a, on a board. Probably work better on the end grade, actually, if you do it with a dovetail saw. And you, uh, one thing, about the, one thing that I've you, I've learned about sawing, hand sawing, is your stance is really important. So you want to keep the saw. I hold the saw with my pistol finger, like your trigger finger, out like this, and get a good stance, not too not too wide, but one foot kind of in the back uh, in the back of the other. You want to keep your arm, so your arm moving in a straight motion. Okay. And I always. You let the saw do the work. Um, a lot of guys will try to start off, and you try to start a saw off by pushing so hard it doesn't—it jumps on across the wood. But you let the saw do the work, and I always start. I always use my thumb as a guide, and you always just start with a kind of backward, one backward pull to get that nice place, for the, nice little curve for the saw to rest, and then you just let the saw do the work. You don't have to push too hard. And you just try to cut down that line you did, that line you made. You try to cut straight, and, and the reason you want to, you have that line is so as you're cutting down, if your if your if your if your saw tends to wander, you know where, where the set's too heavy. And then what I always do if the set's too heavy on one side, I just take a water stone of any grit and just kind of swipe it along real quick. And uh, so essentially, you remove that set, and what it winds up doing is creating almost a razor thin line that always seems to track straight. Yeah. I mean, if you're off at the beginning, you may have an angle, but you're never really gonna curve very much, right? Because yeah. the set is so, so yeah. thin. Yeah, I never, I mean, some guys will take the set completely out of their saw. Mm -hmm. I don't do that because the set is there to help the waste, remove the waste, the sawdust. So I don't take it completely out. But, and the other thing you have to remember is as I was teaching for the first week of the students, uh, so this last few weeks ago, uh, the, the students kept coming up to me and asking, Oh, how, you know, I, my saw's not cutting straight. My saw's not, not working well. And I'm like, oh, here, let me see. And I would mark a few lines and bam, 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 straight down the lines. You know, hey, I'm not tooting my own horn, but, you know, <laughs> and I would just say, I just say, no, no, it's not the saw, man. You got to practice more to hand the saw back. And that's really true. It's about practicing, uh, especially cutting straight. And you want to cut straight, you know, your dovetails. If you're going to hand cut dovetails, you need to be able to cut straight. Yeah. And the, my, my other little tip that I, I like is when you're cutting dovetails, you've always marked, you've always marked the base where the, as far as you can go down. So when I, when I cut, I always cut up like this at an angle so that I know as I'm watching my saw here get close to my baseline, I know that it's nowhere near over here because I'm not, I'm not looking. Right. You know, so then as I get close here, I go, I just kind of tilt the saw forward and I pull the saw out and nine times out of 10, you're right on that line. Great. Right at the bottom. Very cool. Next, we're going to look over some, uh, some end grain planing. Uh, end grain typically is just a pain to plane. Mm. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a, uh, that kind of rhyme real quick. Yeah. So um, you can see this is some of that beautiful um, tiger maple that Mark used on his latest creation. That's my backup board in case I screwed up really bad. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. I haven't seen nice maple like this for two years. So um, uh, on the end grain, I always like to use a block plane um, or specifically a low angle block plane. Um, I have a, a nice Veritas uh, number six low angle jack plane, I think it is, that I use too. But I like to use a low angle block plane. Now some of the keys to, to planing end grain is as you're planing across, you're gonna notice 
right here, at this edge, it's really, it's really fragile. So what a lot of guys will do is just come in and just slightly chamfer that edge. Nothing too extraordinary. Just because so then you can plane down. It's a lot of end grain. Yeah, it's I, didn't I didn't pick the best board for this. Sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> it would just focus on this side over here. Yeah, that's fine. can't get that part because I can't get over there, but you'll notice that there's, there's no real chip out on that edge, and we are pointing pretty aggressively to get there. And so the farther you go down, you know, you got to come back. If you need to plane some more, you're going to have to go back and chamfer that a little bit more and then keep going. Okay. Okay, so for anybody who doesn't know, Kaleo does a podcast this week in Wood, and I think in the future, from what we were talking about, it sounds like you might be venturing into some videos, which will be really cool. Yeah. So if you want to plug your stuff, let everybody know what your website is, in case they don't already know, because we talk about you all the time. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, uh, kaleosworkshop.com. Um, there's not a, I'm, I'm starting to get better content on there. I've been kind of out of school, out of a shop, and moving, so. Well, moving back to the country, and, yeah. and just having a kid, I think you got your hands full yeah, yeah. a little bit, so. But um, yeah, I'm really, looking for, I'm really looking forward to getting the shop set up, and then doing like, uh, I really want to do like a little hands-on type stuff, so teaching things and things like that, so. Cool, cool. Check back often. So you think the podcasting is going to take control of your career? Mm. <laughs> like no, it did, like I don't mine? think so. <laughs> I don't think it'll get that, to that point, but. <laughs> Yeah, that's always an interesting path to take. Yeah, you know, I... But it will, it will influence it, though. I can tell yeah. you that. I mean, it, just by doing it and, and uh, talking to people about your work, and especially if you start showing your projects as you build them, yeah. it definitely changes the dynamic a little bit. So, yeah, it's but it's, it's thought-provoking, for yeah, sure. It's really good. I really, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy interacting with everybody and, yeah. you know, and, and, and getting comments and getting the, and the feedback on things, and it's really... It's really interesting to hear other people's stories and other people's views on things. I mean, yeah. I know you experienced it with that table. Mm -hmm. It's really big time. It's yeah. really good to get people's opinions on things because a lot of times you might get stuck in a rut yeah. on something, so people can offer offer you help and you can bounce ideas off of people. So yeah, definitely. Well, do you do you find like as you're designing things in, in the school, did you get a lot of feedback on your design in terms of you're going down a certain route and maybe your instructor doesn't think it's the right way to go? I mean, do you, did, they, did they confront you in that way, or did they just kind of let you be what you want to be and make what you want to make? Um, it, was, it was really interesting. My, we, I had two different head, head, heads of school while I was there. The mm -hmm. first one, he was, he was a master craftsman, so we learned a lot of really techniques with him. Okay. And he's a great designer, but the new guy, the second guy, our president or whatever you want to call him, was, uh, he's a designer. Okay. Um, and he's a furniture maker too, but he's, he's, he's more into the design. So it was really interesting talking with design with him because they would ask you, uh, build, one project was um, a cabinet project. Okay. And I didn't want to build the traditional cabinet, so I built this coffee table that contained a cabinet and all these weird things. You can see it on my, mm -hmm. on my, uh, on my blog. But as I talked with him, he would always give you feedback that would be positive but also push you more yeah, yeah. so it was always it was always why are you doing this mm -hmm. why do you want to put that there why this because he they want you, you want to you want to be able to justify what you're doing you don't want to be able you just don't, don't want to go oh well because i think it looks good yeah. no you're putting this there because it this curve here accentuates the straight lines here okay all right it, so you have to justify justify your design yeah it's just not design uh for design's sake it's, yeah. it's you know form which, following function or something yeah which you know, there's a, there's, there's a median in there, there's a happy ground where you justify everything, but at the same time, you can do things on the fly. Yeah. Like, I, that's how, I'm more that way. I more like to, to start building something. I'll draw an initial concept, and as I'm going, I go, oh, I don't like that so much, I'm changing this now. Sure, just be flexible. Yeah, whereas sometimes we were, t you know, the program was more nut everything out, get it all down on paper, get it all technical drawings, everything out done, sure. then build it. Okay. And I wasn't, that's not... I'm not I find that, that way. I find that harder. I think if, you know, once you start seeing things in 3D space, 
it suddenly yeah. changes your impression and you can see things now that you couldn't see on paper yeah. and you couldn't have predicted until you got there. So you have to have a little bit of flexibility in your design because if you just kind of, you know, go toward the finish line and only follow your plan, you may miss an opportunity, I think. Yeah, and at the end, at the end you might not even like it. Yeah. I had to design a chair and I did the whole thing just like that. There's a chair, it's all designed. I got six weeks into the chair and just completely hated it, so I threw it away and started anew. Oh I just say, uh, yeah. That's rough. Yeah, That's it's, rough. yeah, it makes you cry. Yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> well, Kalea, we are all very excited, I'm sure, to, uh, oh. to, to observe your journey into the oh, world of woodworking, <laughs> and we'll be, I'm sure uh, a lot of people will be checking it out. And hopefully... Well, thank you. Thank everybody else. It's been a pleasure being here. Yeah, no, it was great. He, he, believe it or not, Kaleo just flew out for the day from San Diego, and he's flying back tonight. Uh, it's not that far, you know, not that big nah, of a flight. Like but an hour flight. Still, though, to me, to get on a plane, that's a big deal. I'm, uh, I'm a baby like that. So <laughs> I appreciate you coming hey, out. Hey, anything man. to come meet the Wood Whisperer. Yeah, hey, but no one else can. Just, <laughs> just Kaleo. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. And yeah. uh, keep your eye, kaleosworkshop.com. Dot com. Yeah. And uh, lots of good stuff there. So, cool. cool. Peace. with all these tools it's been so long <laughs> what happened to Mark yeah. I was replaced I'm very replaceable well, they, so, sit, they sit on the wall for decoration so it's nice <laughs> it's nice to have somebody actually use them now the question I have for you is um, do you find that sandals help you cut straighter um, I find that sandals uh, while flying <laughs> are are the best <laughs> okay.